Future State, Swamp Thing, Issue 2, Ram V with Mike Perkins. Uh, I have to say, because uh, yeah, we, we liked the first issue of this, but it wasn't mm-hmm. a complete home run or anything. It was definitely good, but not great. Uh, I do think the second issue is a bit better. I actually like this, this second part I, more. I think it's considerably better. I think this issue has all the heart in it that I needed. Yeah. yeah. There's, uh, there's that, and I feel part. like this, this is, I feel, more this creative team's, like, st- like statement of how they feel about the character more than the first was. Like, the first was all set up. Right. Yeah, so just to uh, re- is... reiterate where we are at the start of this, uh, you know, a human humans run into Swamp Thing and the what guy's leading them back to uh, this, this Star Labs base where we found out at the end of the issue that Obsidian was being used to power some insane experiment. They look yeah. like Woodrow, and it's confirmed very quickly in this, it is Woodrow, mm-hmm. uh, who's doing this. Um, and, yeah, like, obviously... We, we have the experiment say we have Woodrow being evil as shit and all these things where Woodrow just wants to plunge the world into darkness and basically kill all life on Earth, including the plants. Yeah, yeah and, and part of his plan with Obsidian here is the darkness hides them uh, mm-hmm. from Swamp Thing, so they're basically safe. Yeah. This, you know, this is him just getting his own way. Basically. Yeah, it's not it's not until the human being actually sort of like leads them sh- like through the threshold of the bubble, essentially, to they, they right, can see yeah. the, the, the base. So some great panels of, of some action of Swamp Thing and his, his you know, quote-unquote family uh, bash their way in, especially the panels, uh, the pages with the fire, where they're trying oh, to... Those are yeah, gorgeous. They're trying to burn Swamp Thing, and he's yelling like, as he's on fire, walking through a wall of flames, did you think fire would really stop me? <laughs> it's just... It's like, have, have you not learned yet that I know. I'm better than you? Basically? It's so good. And Woodrow at this point is not even really human. Like, he's, he's replaced himself with so much plant and... Stuff. That's what I liked is that it was so like <laughs> dystopic, but not in like usually when you get that in a story, it's a guy that's that's replaced himself with machines. Mm-hmm. Here he's done it with plants, and it's so much more horrific. Like, oh yeah, it, I think it is. It doesn't it's, look it's, horrific. It's just the idea. It's because like, it's something we don't see, so we're not used to it. Like yeah. we're kind of acclimatized to. Yeah, you know, the cyberpunk replaced with all the body uh-huh. parts, machines, and right. you know, we're like, oh, okay, it's fine. We've seen that all before. I don't think I've ever seen this before. I think I would say no. this looks horrific, uh, to the point where if they ever do some sort of, for whatever reason this gets adapted to live action, I would be fascinated to what the, the live action, because oh, he's, he's got parts of skin that are kind of stretched over parts of a Swamp it's thing body. This and does got, like... feel like it could be a movie, rather than, you know, yeah. like, mm-hmm. it wouldn't make a TV show concept either, or anything like that. I mean, it's right. Like, this feels like a great two-hour movie you can make out of this two issues. To me, it feels like it's an episode of a TV show where there's like a future episode. Where yeah, like that, that one works story. the same as just a movie, yeah. right? You, you, uh, you could call it a future state. <laughs> see what you, you can see what's going on. So there's some implications here that Swamp Thing himself is actually responsible for the state mm-hmm. of the world. Um, and effectively... The plan with Obsidian is happening. The Obsidian's the the, it's just, the the event has been triggered. It's going yeah. to happen. The Black Sun. Yeah, and or Obsidian. Sw- and Swamp Thing essentially needs to do something to save what remains of humanity, and he starts to basically, I don't want to say kill, but sort of reabsorb all the life that he's given his family members mm-hmm. as they plead with them not to. Like, why are you doing this for the humans? It- is it killing if they don't have souls? Yeah. Because that's that's kind of what he comes down to, is he can create right. life enough that they've got a bit of a personality from characteristics of himself. They've got bodies, because he can create that. But they don't have a soul. They can never be more than what he made them to be, yeah. not like humanity. And he even well, talks about what each one of them can, kind of represent as a part of him, you know, yeah. like the younger one's kind of his heart or whatever. Or his, uh, innocent. Yeah, his innocent, innocent style, ambition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he talks about all this... Uh, and effectively what he does, and I kind of, I do like this ending a lot, where he effectively turns himself into a giant tree that b- sort of breaks out of the, the obsidian dome around Earth so that something is reaching the sunlight and can transfer down nutrients and some food, some some sustainable life. And the humans that are left live in his roots at the bottom. And mm-hmm. for generations... And giant roots as well. Yeah. Like, this isn't, you yeah. know... that. They are he, massive. So he becomes Yggdrasil, the world Pretty much. tree. Yeah. Like, so. Yeah. But yeah, we this have these. Such... We have generations of families, uh, you know, 
you know, it's implied that it's centuries and centuries this happens. Yeah. Uh, until eventually, and I, I like this touch that they're all wearing glasses because I've never seen sunlight before. When they come out at the right. end, when eventually the obsidian thing, you know, wanes, you know, wanes and it goes away. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it has this hopeful thing where one leaf is growing, and the idea that that might regrow a swamp thing. It's it's yeah. it ties back to something earlier in the issue where he talks about you know they built farms in this place for their own sustenance, mm-hmm. so that by the time he's aware of it, that's it. There's enough there for him to be the swamp thing and and to take control right. and and you know use that through the green and and the idea that here there's one seed left and that's enough for it to come back. Uh, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a very hopeful ending. Yeah, and, and you know. know I was going to say, the characters, you get the the sense that the characters here, these humans that have, through these generations, and the kid at the end says this about his mum, is, oh, is this like the stories you told me of the swamp thing? Uh, Like, the the idea that there's a legend is growing. He's almost like they're they're his god because he gave them this. And I'm thinking of, like, civilizations we find in, like, various sci-fi shows or fantasy shows Mm -hmm. where they'll worship something that gives them life in their one little, like, community. And it kind of feels like that to me here at the end, where yeah. they've all been worshiping Swamp Thing for generations because, yeah, he is kind of the, the thing that's given them some sustainable life well, he, he, until it, now. But it is, when you start to talk about religion, he does sacrifice his himself that's and true. his kind yeah. to, so humanity can persist. So, like, there is, like, this religious layer thrown over there, but it's not overt. It's not like... No, I think it's, man, it's clearly there. Shoving it's not, it down. It's not hidden. But, yeah. But, and so, like, it, it is the this is like the beginning of a new world myth. You know, these are the the people that were raised in the tree, and and it's just like, you know, we, we usually get this type of stuff in Wonder Woman and whatnot, but here, that aspect, it, you know, just from what I've read from Ram V and in Justice League Dark, you could tell he really likes the world myths, yeah. you know, and how they fit, how superheroes fit into that aspect and here when you find out that that swamp thing has created life but they're they're just versions of himself so did he really create life or did he just mimic life it's almost you could argue reproduction rather than creation in in, in a way Um, but his sacrifice here enables you know humanity to keep living at the cost of his own creation or yeah. his, and his own self. It, it, it so. talks about that's why the green always chooses a human for its avatar, right. because that capability untethered. to go up and beyond. Right. right. When it's untethered and whatnot. And and just the, the idea that Swamp Thing destroyed, but it was it's the horned Swamp Thing that we're getting from the the Perkins and, and Ram V story coming up. You know, it's, it's very yeah. much that design. This, this has me a lot more so. excited for that new book now, yeah. because... I don't know. I like if you weren't. Well I, I, I was excited anyway because Ram V. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But right. that first issue of this was it was good. But like, I think I said at the time it was possibly the weakest single issue I'd read from Ram V. Mm-hmm. Whereas this is no, no, no. This this hit it back this out. Was this is what I expect. This yeah. this throws out the big concepts. This throws out the heart with it though. It's uh, this Man. this is what I want. I almost rather have had this be a big double size one that came out together mm. than having the break in between. Because this is just a very, like, all of that was set up so he could tell this part of the story, I feel, you know? I think so... it, it reads really well as a two-issue story. I think as two separate issues, it's mm-hmm. very heavily weighted towards this one. I mean, yeah. I, I, in the long run, though, like, how many people are going to read these individually now at this point? You know, when it's in the trade, as whoever yeah. it's collected, they'll yeah. be back-to-back. People will just read and the I whole think thing. It, it, this and Wonder Woman so far are two of the strongest just by themselves. I, like it says a lot that it's it's this Wonder Woman and Catwoman, I would say. As yeah. Well. So. Yeah. yeah. Um. Just just on how well they stand alone, and who knows, maybe the Superman one as well. When we get the second, you know, another part from that, um, from Philip Kennedy Johnson. That part you know. of it, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I was as a whole yeah. issue. It's it's a little. No, bit no, but yeah. I'm just talking about pieces that that kind of rise above the whole future state. Branding. Yeah, I wouldn't put um, Catwoman in that list because I think Catwoman is still too embedded in the magistrate and everything going on in the, the greater world. It's not on its own. It's it's good. Right, it's great. Right. It's one of the best it's in terms good, of though. quality, but it's not on its own. Right. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, where, yeah, whereas, yeah, so... that's that's Swamp Thing. Like, it doesn't even matter this future, even though it's set in the future. This could be just a right. a random. Like you could be reading the Swamp Thing run, and they would do a, like oh, we're going to two issues set this... in the distant future because this is this is like not even just like twenty years in the future. This is. 
like millennia. But yeah, this is like way off. Like nothing we ever do in the rest of the run ha- ever has to it's even remotely build to this. Like the uh, the Wonder the Immortal Wonder Woman run, right? Yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. very you know way in the future yeah. and just yeah, dealing, you know yeah. the the dark side stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, but just like this could have almost been in one of those Swamp Thing anthologies they like to put out. You know, like Tales of the Swamp it's Thing. Pretty yeah. telling that uh, the last Swamp Thing issue, you know, that big anniversary issue, whatever mm-hmm. it was that they did. Yeah. Last year, it was uh, Rambi and Perkins that did the, you know, the the the, the through line story. Yeah. So. But yeah, no, it's, it's real, real good. That's really good. Uh, the pads, what I mentioned, the page, the panels of the 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 tree sort of going up and breaking the the atmosphere of the uh, the, the obsidian sort of dome and into the sky. They're, they're probably my favorite page in the the book. But I think yeah. I think for me, it comes down to either. Uh, one one of the uh, the reabsorption panels. Uh, I don't know if it'll be Heather the first one because of the shock of it, or if it is the uh, you know the the one on the following page with the the, the child one. Uh, I can't. I don't know which one the, the, the name is. That. Where he's actually saying what they each represent or what they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that final panel where it's like, oh, you were all in your own way, perfect, and she's like fading away as it does it. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, fantastic stuff. Yeah. All right, Matt, what are you giving it? I mean, this one a nine. Connor. Uh, I'm going to give it an eight. I'm going to be with Matt on this one. 